Hello, this is Positive Psych Talk with David Startouch. Welcome again to this podcast series on post-traumatic growth and the Thrive Model from Dr. Stephen Joseph's book, What Doesn't Kill Us, The New Psychology of Post-Traumatic Growth. So for those of you who have been joining us, um, I want to say thank you for showing up and coming back. If you were just joining the series, I would recommend you start at either episode one or episode two because there's some important safety nets and preparation things that this will help ensure a uh, the most success through this project. And uh, we're I'm putting these in uh, 21 minute maximum episodes, so you've got uh, digestible content. Again, uh, you might do this driving, you might do this, uh, listen to this initially driving or uh, at home. Uh, I personally love to do this kind of work. I just get my t- some tea, uh, I'll get my notebook candy, and then I would start listening or going through a book and just making notes. So I'd encourage you, uh, again, to stop anytime you need to. Uh, just make a note of the time on a, like a journal or a notebook and then return to it when you're ready. Also, listen to these over and over to really digest it in the way that works best for you. Uh, for those, I'm also going to recap my credentials. So uh, if you've heard this part, uh, feel free to tune out mentally for a moment. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate. I'm uh, in studying psychology and uh, philosophy and cognitive neuroscience. I have a master's in clinical counseling. I'm licensed in Colorado as a uh, therapist where I do Again, I don't really really do therapy. I do crisis evaluation and getting people help in the emergency room setting. So I don't do therapy clients or don't take the therapy clients. I work from a coaching capacity of the here and now, much of helping uh, trauma survivors rebuild their lives and take ownership. Uh, I also do bulletproofing uh, with uh, uh, basically mo- mostly attorneys or other sometimes um, usually uh, some people in like difficult work situations so they can endure uh, often divorces. I've never done a criminal one yet, pseudo criminal divorce or um, tax stuff, and uh, supporting clients to endure to be able to build this training and resilience so they can be in court and take the character attacks while still growing and not be torn down. And that is a key aspect of post traumatic growth: is you will find you develop superpowers, so to speak, this ability to to be able to. T- uh, be resilient to m- many changes and unexpected traumas and when develop thicker skin without losing that beautiful part of your character or heart. And you don't need to just put off armor and shut people out. We can, be, we can build this resilient armor that tells the predators, no, not interested, and you're, you're not going not gonna to get to us, as well as providing the sense of safety and joy and this vibrance that's going to attract new beautiful people into your life. And I just wanted to caveat and start with that to let you know that this journey here, and we're just on signpost one where we're starting to take stock, is going to, as is, is you're doing the work, you can't do this work without becoming a better person and enriching your life and inspiring others. And one of my aims with these this podcast is to provide a resource that you can keep coming back to uh, with my own Survivor Hero reboot process, I've done it so many times. And when I hit a, a lull in life, I just go back to it. And sometimes I can go back to individual steps. So as you finish this program and you find, you know what? I need to go back and work on signpost one. Uh, and these are broken into part one, part two, part three. So you're like, oh yeah, signpost one, part one, part two. And so as you're making notes, you'll be able to go through and say, yep, that's where I'm, I was struggling. That's the audio I should listen to. Uh, that's the other advantage of this journal that you can keep. Okay, so we're going to begin again. Uh, We're going to start with uh, where I left off before. And it was, he was just talking about how sometimes people don't feel they have time or energy for their emotional, their own emotional state. They have, it has to wait. And so he said, if that describes you, you need to redirect your focus to yourself. And to do that, you must first deal with the basics of taking stock. And let us consider each of these basic items in turn. And then on the recap, the last episode, I said that's where you also can date yourself. Something I love to take, take my clients through, some great exercises there. So here we go. Check that you are physically safe. You need to make sure that you're physically safe. Are you in physical danger? Sometimes people feel so chaotic in the aftermath of adversity, they put themselves in danger by leaving appliances switched on, driving carelessly, crossing the road without looking both ways, and so on. 
This is because they're distracted. But in some cases, the risk may be deliberate. Now, I'm going to also be come at it on a limb and just share some of my own story. I used to intentionally put myself in harm's way just to take risks because I was in so much pain, it felt better to take a risk and feel something than to not. And this is a really common experience of trauma survivors. And this is when we start taking stock on this, doing this step here, this is where you really begin one of the most powerful steps of your hero journey. So to continue, in other words, one survivor of trauma, or in the words of one survivor of trauma, I knew I was driving too much, and I knew I was tired, but at times I just didn't care. I thought I would, I thought if I were to kill myself, all this would just go away. Now, if that describes you, take a moment to think about how you can remove yourself from danger and from being a danger to others. Would it be useful to take some time off? Can you stay with friends or relatives? Is it possible to change your routine for a while? If you can't come up with a solution yourself, you need to seek professional help. All right, so I'm really glad he mentioned this because this is this is what I do. This is my, my part-time job on the weekends. In fact, I'm doing it again tonight. And if you don't feel safe, go to the emergency room. Uh, you will um, just let them know you're not feeling safe, you're having some suicidal thoughts, or you're, you've had trauma and you don't feel you keep yourself safe. Uh, they can help give you referrals. They can talk with somebody. Now, that's if you're in an imminent crisis because obviously... Now, emergency rooms are covered by insurance, but uh, that is often a big, scary thing. Now, some of the potential outcomes, just so you can be aware, because I like informed consent on this, is that one of two things will happen. You'll talk to somebody, and uh, somebody like me, crisis evaluator, and they're, they're going to go through and we'll, we'll do a nice evaluation of your life. We'll run it by a psychiatrist and see... Um, see what we'd recommend. We'll collaborate together. So it's usually an ED physician, a psychiatrist, or on-call psychiatrist, and a, a mental health clinician like myself. You'll probably just be dealing with the clinician directly and initially the medical evaluator of the, the physician. Um, the psychiatrist is on-call. You probably won't be seeing them. The psychiatrist will either recommend you go inpatient, and sometimes that's putting you on your 72-hour hold just to keep you safe, where we're going to temporarily take away your rights, uh, and that means we want to have you psychiatric evaluated because sometimes it gets scary and uh, people then want to put themselves back in harm's way. And it's more often states put a law in place of the 72-hour hold in California. It's called a 5150. Here in Colorado, the statute is 2765 or an M1 hold. And that is just so we can make sure you're safe, evaluate you psychiatrically, and get you help. Uh, you do have a right to refuse medications in pretty much every state in that regard unless you won't be safe. Now, uh, that is the dramatic, I can't see myself, I keep myself safe, and I really just need to, to get into a safe place, all right? So that is the, the ER method. Now, if you feel you're in a much more stable place, you have the resources and these intrusive thoughts, or you're putting yourself in harm's way, and you're aware that not okay, and you need to do something about it, go to psychologytoday.com, and you can pull up therapists and put a list, or you can call a crisis hotline and just talk with somebody and they will talk you through this, talk you down and help you process what's going on. And they'll be able to give a rec recommendation on the crisis hotline. And with the psychology today, you you can put in your insurance. If you don't have insurance, you can list uh, that as well. Now, if you are in a state without insurance and you're super concerned about it and you're just feeling like you're ready to make a change, uh, you can consciously choose to move to a state that has Obamacare. Now, that's where we're in terminalists uh, at certain times. Of I'm not sure on insurance, but Obamacare does cover insurance. So Colorado is a state like that. California is one of those states, and there's many, many others. And that will give you Medicaid coverage, which can get you access to mental health care. So there's many different options available. There's therapists who work with you pro bono, but you need to get professional help if you don't feel safe. And to just go out on a limb, if you're having those suicidal thoughts and those reckless thoughts and feelings, you're already putting yourself in harm's way. You're already risking great financial risk. And um, there's some probably other aspects going on. So you really have less to lose by getting professional help. Nice thing about a th seeing a therapist early is it skips the, it can avoid the ER method altogether. 
which is the, the more severe um, emergency medication, emergency treatment. And you can create change in your life now, get some support, and I, we, can, we highly recommend that. So I'm very glad Dr. Stefan Joseph said that. You can tell he's a fantastic clinician. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next section. And this is actually a little bit of what we just talked about. Check that you're getting medical, psychological, and legal help if you need it. Everyone's circumstance is different. But when people are vulnerable, they need to have people around them who can protect them and shelter them in some way. In addition to emotional issues, trauma often leaves people with a long list of other problems to sort out. Family and friends might be able to help with some of these, but professional help may also be required. Seeking help is not a sign of weakness. People need to reach out for help when they are vulnerable and lack the resources or expertise to help themselves. Check that you're eating well. Good nutrition is important. Make sure that you don't eat too much, but also make sure you get enough calories. Emphasize fruit, vegetables, drink lots of water, avoid processed foods, as these often contain too much salt and sugar. Good breakfast is important, and it's better to have many small meals through the day than it is for one big meal. I have so many things to add on that, but we're going to keep going. I'm sure you can, we'll catch that in another video. Next, check that you're getting enough sleep. Getting to sleep and staying asleep can be difficult for people who've experienced trauma. A few tips. Avoid coffee in the late afternoon and evening. Make sure that you're not, make sure to not eat too much in the hours before bedtime. Do not watch TV before bed and make sure the bedroom is completely dark. If you don't have curtains that thoroughly block out light, obtain eye shades. Many people also find calming music is helpful. If you follow these steps and are still struggling to sleep, try this. Make a list of 10 things you need to do, but keep putting off, such as completing your tax return, cleaning the bedroom, cleaning the bathroom, or tidying the back of the kitchen cupboards. Then, once you've gone to bed, give yourself 30 minutes to fall asleep. If at the end of those 30 minutes you are still awake, get up and do whatever is on the top of your list. Or if you fall asleep but wake up during the night and can't get back to sleep within 15 minutes, get up and do whatever is on the top of your list. And when necessary, do the same thing on subsequent nights. After a few weeks, you will be sleeping soundly. If not, seek advice from your medical practitioner. The next section. Stay physically active. The mind and body are intertwined. Your physical state affects how you feel. For that reason, it's important to stay physically active. You needn't go to the gym every day, but you do need to make sure that your body is active during each day. Can you walk instead of driving? If you're in Boulder, this is me interjecting, maybe you can bike. Can you take the stairs instead of the elevator? Do think about engaging in exercise. Exercise in itself is healthy. Of course, but it can also provide a healthy distraction to free up your mind when it needs a break the most. As one woman told me, just keeping fit gave me focus and helped me take my mind off things. But remember, exercise should leave you feeling refreshed, not exhausted. Unless, of course, this is me interjecting, you're doing CrossFit. Though with CrossFit, also please make sure you add are consulting your doctor and being safe because when you're first exercising, you don't want to overdo it, especially if you're dealing from trauma. You need some of those physical and mental resources to ensure your safety, health, well-being, and mental recovery, as well as physical recovery. Okay, moving on. The next section, make sure you keep pleasurable things in your life and try to maintain your routines as much as possible. Now, when I start, uh, interject here, when I first started this series, I mentioned that I take medication and I try to take it every day at 1 p.m. This helps me maintain a basic routine. When I don't do this, I sometimes forget. This medication also helps me focus with ADD. It's kind of like a wonder drug in that it handles many different things. In some people, it increases anxiety. But for most, uh, it, the common side effects are uh, better focused. Uh, it can actually help you stop smoking increased sex drive, reduced appetite, and uh, more dopamine in the brain, and so greater sense of well-being, as well as you enjoy doing things, and so you have more mental resources, and it's the mood elevator stabilizer there. And uh, But some people, it gives increased anxiety, especially people with trauma. So if you're on, if just know, Wellbutrin isn't for everybody if you have trauma. Okay, so that said, routine is very helpful. 
Though you may feel tired or unmotivated, as is common among people with post-traumatic stress, take the time to do the things that you used to enjoy, such as reading, gardening, listening to music, eating out with friends, or soaking up, soaking in a luxurious warm bath. Perhaps you can even try something new occasionally. You might not be able to maintain your routines at the same level as before. Just don't let them slip altogether. Next section is to is practice learning to relax. All too often, people forget to breathe. Breathing is the key to relaxation. So take a moment to focus on taking a slow on taking slow deep breaths or slow steady breaths. Your out breath should be longer than your in breath. As you breathe out, count to eleven. As you breathe in, count to seven. When you first get into your car in the morning, take a few moments to relax before setting off. Also, schedule regular time during each day to check on your breathing. Another technique for relaxation is a body scan. The body scan is a technique often used by yoga practitioners. You can use it yourself to help fall asleep. Sitting or lying down comfortably, pay attention to one part of your body at a time. Starting with your toes, ask yourself, how do they feel? Pay attention to each toe in turn. Take your time. Bring your awareness to your ankles. How do they feel? Keep moving systematically around your body. Stomach, chest, arms, neck, fingers. Remember to take your time. Be aware of these sensations, noticing each part of your body and then moving on to another part. Notice how relaxed you begin to feel. You might find it helpful to tense each part of the body for a few seconds as you move through the scan. Some people feel more comfortable with mindfulness practices, which in contrast to most relaxation exercises, do not call for deep or patterned breathing. For five minutes, simply focus on the air going in and out as you breathe. Notice how it feels and where it is in the body and where the breath is coming from. Don't try to change it. Instead, just appreciate how your normal breathing functions. Another way to relax is just to sit and focus your attention on one thing. Then, note three things that you can see at the periphery of your vision. Just note them. Take your time. Don't look directly at these things. Then, close your eyes and note the three things you can hear. Then, open your eyes and note three sensations in your body. Repeat these steps a few times, noticing three things at the periphery, just noting them, taking your time, without looking directly at them, closing your eyes, and noticing three things you hear. And then open your eyes and notice three sensations in your body, again, repeating a few times. And don't worry if you find that your mind has wandered at first. It's understandable. And in any case, relaxation is a skill that comes with practice. Instead of berating yourself, simply notice that your attention has wandered and return to the exercise. Practice self-compassion. This is the next section. After trauma, people may become critical of themselves, agonizing about what they should have done that they need to think about things through. or I mean, they do need to think things through, of course, but endlessly brooding over things doesn't help. And if you find yourself doing this, practice some self-compassion instead. Consider putting yourself into a state of relaxation first. And as we near the end, there is more to this section, which we will continue. But that is going to be for the next, next episode. I can already tell... 
that we are probably going to be doing just one of these things a week. And as you heard probably in that, I noticed it myself when I was doing those, my yoga meditation voice kicked in. And I think I will be recording my previous meditations, the autogenic medita- meditation, the progressive relaxation meditation. I, I used to do these and they would just put people to sleep. When they had these on Omvana, uh, they were very successful. I'm not with Omvana anymore. Um, but they were, I was just amazed at how many downloads. I gave my best one away and um, it was hugely popular. So we're going to re-record this with this new technology that uh, Survivor Heroes purchased. And to help you get some rest and relaxation, you can try this deep breathing. Again, this was one of my specialties that I would take clients through directly. Please uh, like, subscribe, comment on YouTube, share this with others, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about this process and this, this series. This is David Startouch. Namaste.